everyone, welcome to my channel, Life as a Law Student. My name is Nicole and I am headed off to law school this fall, so I'm creating law-related content every single Monday, but today is not one of those days. Today though, we're watching Jubilee's most recent Middle Ground episode, Should You Watch Porn? And that's because I had the opportunity to be in that episode. So I'm gonna watch it for the first time right here with you guys. And I'm also going to include some behind the scenes footage that I filmed with my brother on the day that we went into LA to film it. Yo, what's up? I'm Elijah, Nicole's brother. And what are we up to? We are going to LA today. We are going to be filming the series Middle Ground with Jubilee. I'm a little nervous about my um, opinion coming across the right way because obviously I have um, a great respect for people with all different opinions. Just, I think a lot of them are wrong. So, <laughs> you can respect the person without respecting the opinion, I think. That is one way of thinking about yeah. it, I guess. <laughs> what do you think about it? Well, hey, you want to film me? Just kidding, you're driving. <laughs> I know it's very addicting and it can get in the way of a lot of people's relationships. I'm not a huge debating person, uh, like Nicole. Because like, he lose. Uh, no, I do lose a lot. That's why I don't hang out with Nicole. Um, <laughs> As he sits in the car, just to help me with carpool, which I'm not even in the You're carpool not even lane. in the carpool lane! <laughs> why am I even here? So here we are in graffiti land. Nice old LA. My more graffiti. And now we enter the the part of the vlog where there's nothing going on and it's just blank film. Uh, content, am I right? <laughs> am I right? Oh, sh talking about my college life? Yeah. Well, it's uh, non-existent <laughs> and <laughs> I'm alone. <laughs> you should just do a video about how we're both single. Can you tell? You know, college life is good. I've met a lot of really cool friends. Now I'm learning a lot. I'm studying to actually become a speech therapist. In case you wanted to know, there's a school. Hey, look, that's Nicole. Yeah, and then, hey, look, that's Jubilee right there. That's, is that it? <laughs> this is it. This is this is where we're going. This big gate thing. So when we head in there, uh, the goal is to, you know. Hopefully find somewhere with air conditioning because it's blazing hot outside and I'm wearing long warm. sleeve <laughs> and pants. That's kinda hard to do. Getting pretty. We need Natalie. Uh, I'm perfectly capable. Thank you. Do you think I wear too much makeup? No. You do not wear it. Do you think I should wear more makeup? No. No. You wear the perfect amount of makeup, I think. And how would you describe the perfect amount? Um, I guess enough to where you look, like, presentable, I guess? Do I not look presentable without makeup? <sighs> Stop cornering me. What makes a girl attractive to me is, first of all, they have to be Christian, because I'm a Christian, and Nicole's a Christian. Heck yeah. So I obviously like to surround myself with people that share my faith. Also, I like people who are outgoing and... You know, I love athletics. I'm very athletic and I play like every sport. Um, Not well. I play a lot of different sports very well. Thank you very much. All right. Here we are. We're going to go walk inside. Yay. I'm not sure which building it is. All righty. Looking all cute. We already Look saw um, a couple people walking in that I recognize from other videos. Quint, quint, quint. Game time. Hey guys, we're here at the Jubilee uh, Studio Lobby. Want to introduce you to my new friends? Hi. How's it going? Hey, Good. Right. <laughs> we're so excited. Eli's still sitting over here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next time you see me, I will be in the car letting you know how it went. So actually, before we do that, I did just want to say something that didn't make it into my final cut of the behind the scenes footage. I had such a good time with these people. And you can interpret that one way or another. Watching the Jubilee video, we definitely had our heated moments. But at the end of the day, I got to hug all of them. We all took a picture together. I can honestly say it was such a privilege and blessing to meet all of you if you're watching 
God bless you and thank you so much for being a part of this with me, uh, for listening to my perspective and really being respectful of it even though I was saying things that you totally disagreed with. I hope that you had the same experience talking to me. So now we're gonna meet up with Nicole from the past on her way back home after shooting the video. Make sure you stick around so you can see present Nicole reacting to it. We're on our way home after many hours of filming a 20 minute video or less. Yeah, filming Jubilee was interesting. I had a good time, would do it again, but- Might do it again. Might do it again. I would say I was on the quieter side, although I definitely got my opinion across. I ended up talking a lot about my experience um, as a Christian, what I've heard in the church, and the uh, family members and friends I know who have struggled with pornography. Um, so I ended up talking a lot about that, about why I thought Christians in particular can be viewed as judgmental or aggressive against pornography, pornography users and uh, pornography producers. It was an interesting experience. I definitely was exposed to some different opinions than mine and um, I'm better for the experience. Eli was a champ sitting in the lobby so that was great and now he's driving home because he thinks I'm a terrible driver. It's because he knows. No, no. False. It's a mind, it's a mind game. The lobby was okay actually. One of the editors, she was like, hey, can you make sure to keep it down? Like, these walls are, like, paper thin. That's and true. Like, that is true. I didn't I like, hear you. <laughs> I didn't hear... But we heard, like, dogs barking and airplanes going, and we heard uh, a lot of stuff. We had to pause a lot. I tried to, like, listen to you guys, but I couldn't hear a single thing. So then when she told me that I was being loud, I was like... What are you talking about? All right, I'm going to react to this and honestly, it is my first time watching the final cut. I made my family wait all day to watch it so that they wouldn't spoil it for me. But here we go. Hi, my name is JK. I am a porn addiction recovery coach and I'm passionate about helping men who struggle with uh, compulsive sexual behaviors. Hi, my name is Maria. I run a youth organization and we educate on this issue. I thought it was so cool, the diversity of professions and backgrounds that Jubilee put together for this video. I felt pretty unqualified sitting there with two professional creators of pornography and two people professionally fighting against it, speaking against it, writing against it. I've watched porn in the past and I think I've watched uh, more than my fair share of it <laughs> to the point that it changed my life. But right now I don't because I'm at a point where it's been a decade. So you can tell when they cut things because every time that camera angle changes for like a second and you're like, that was really fast camera change. And I feel like at this point we're all used to Jubilee doing it, but those are all just because they're cutting out huge chunks of people talking. So this is a 15 minute video. We talked for two and a half hours non-stop. So I honestly don't remember all of the different prompts they asked us. I don't remember what everybody said in its entirety, but I can tell you right now that his answer was not that short. Hey guys. <laughs> I was standing back there for so long. Like it was, it was a good 15 minutes of me just standing in the back of this warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just something I've only seen cause destruction in the relationships um, that I've been close to and I've purposely stayed away from it. Obviously I've watched modern movies, I've driven on the freeway. Unfortunately, I've been exposed to images of people who are naked or having sex, but I'm the person who fast forwards all those scenes, closes my eyes, like I, not when I'm driving, but like I just, I honestly have no interest in seeing that and certainly not after witnessing the things that I have, which hopefully they will keep me talking about. I don't think it's the cause. I think it's a symptom of the cause. It certainly pushed forward into issues of deceit, of mistrust and broken relationships that certainly weren't helped by an exposure to pornography. But what if you saw a healthy relationship around pornography? Would that change your mind? I think an amazing relationship is subjective. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I know people are going to disagree with me about this. Obviously, Buck did. Um, I don't see pornography or the desire to watch pornography as a symptom 
of a healthy relationship. I think those two things are actually mutually exclusive. Lust is a very different thing than love. And I believe sexual intimacy is supposed to be what you do with someone who you love. And not just someone who you love, but someone that you've committed to love for the rest of your life. Anything outside of the bounds of a consenting adult man and woman who are naturally born that way and engaged in marriage, anything outside of those bounds that's sexual in nature is not what God's plan for us is, is not what we've been designed for. And I use that specifically to teach the world about sexual experiences with a man like myself. And it is sex educational on some level. It's also body educational. But the question that I have for all of you would be, what are we doing about the 11, for the 11 year olds who can one moment are playing Fortnite or Minecraft and the next they are watching someone of your gender, which they have no understanding of what it is and using that to determine what their sexual identity is going to be. What are the ethics of it? Is it are at all costs I must educate people? When I was eight, I never got to see anything like that. Eight year olds should not be watching pornography. Nobody should, but like, Really? Now, if I was eight year old and I got to pick up my phone and I got to see me, I would be like, actually, wow. I think I learned about sex when I was nine, but I didn't even care about boys at all until I was like in high school. If I had an eight year old, I would never let that eight year old have a phone or be on the internet. If somebody says, oh, I wish that when I was an eight year old, I could have seen a man with a vagina have sex and then say, eight year olds shouldn't be watching pornography. I'm not sure what the solution here is that you're proposing. Well, what if children on some level were, talk, were taught about sex as a positive thing, Absolutely. as a beautiful thing, as not a... I agree with that. I think sex is beautiful. I think it's something God created for us to enjoy within the bounds of marriage. What better person to explore this new part of yourself with? I'm definitely not at that point yet, and so I'm good with waiting. Pornography isn't real. Like, that's, this is just a, sh a show. And unfortunately, not everybody has that realization. And I think that's at least one of the reasons why that whole concept of pornography being a form of education is totally missing the point. Because pornography isn't real. It's a fantasy. After um, asking for forgiveness, I just think that there should be um, an easier way to move on and grow out of that experience. Yeah, so sin carries with it shame. And that's not necessarily wrong. What's wrong is that we sin and that we therefore have to experience shame. But the wonderful thing about faith and about Christianity is that Jesus bears that shame, he bears that sin, and he takes the punishment for us so we don't have to be ashamed anymore. Now that doesn't mean that sinning is okay and you don't have to feel bad when you do anything wrong, but that initial negative stigma carries with it a reminder you were created for more than this so yeah should sin have a negative stigma absolutely but does that mean that that needs to follow you for the rest of your life no i i can i agree with you, you don't ever have to accept what i do only thing i ask for is respect and respect means no stigma while i would maybe not give you exactly what you want as respect for your profession i absolutely respect you as a person and I think that your opinions, while totally wrong, are <laughs> you have the right to have that opinion. And I do totally believe that. I believe that God gave us free will, that he gave us the ability and the right to say, yes, God, I love you and I choose you and I'm going to step into that identity and destiny and plan for my life that you've created for me. Or you can say, no, I don't believe in you. No, I don't love you. No, I think my way's better. That breaks God's heart, but he does give us the right to say that. And at the end of the day, we're all going to face the consequences of either choice. And yet it's still true that Buck was created in the image of God and therefore has innate dignity and is worthy of respect and does have good things to bring into the world. I just don't agree with Buck that pornography is one of those things. Teach the children about consent and autonomy over their bodies and communication with their partners and how to do that in a healthy way. Well, I agree with all of that. So my first thought is, wow, they cut so much out. Uh, I wish I had written down all the questions they'd asked us because they definitely uh, removed a lot of it. Something I loved about the entire two and a half hour experience and the 15 minute video 
was that we did have the ability to have really, really tense conversations where we were just talking over each other and be like, no, like you don't get what I'm saying. And yet those hugs that we were exchanging at the end and the ability to say, I'm so glad I met you were 100% real. And I did love having that conversation with those people. We really, I think, did open up our minds to different thoughts that one another had. Um, something that got cut out at the end that I think will always stick with me is Buck saying, I really feel like I learned something from every one of you here today. And isn't that the whole point of middle ground? Not necessarily to change one another's perspectives because you wouldn't be in middle ground if you didn't have a strong enough perspective to stand behind it, but to be able to learn something you didn't know before, to be able to hear a perspective that you hadn't been exposed to before. To consider where someone else is coming from, even if still at the end of the day you say something like I did, I don't respect your opinion, but I respect you and I respect your right to hold that opinion. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video of me reacting to Jubilee's Middle Ground episode and me showing you some behind the scenes footage of what it was like to film it. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do another reaction video to the comments that this video receives. I will definitely be reading them. Whether or not that turns into a video is up to you. So please make sure to go in the comments and say yes or no. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. God bless.